This is Pat Salber with The Doctor Weighs In, and I have a very special guest today, Dr. Bobby Reddy, who is a practicing oncologist at UCLA and also the chief medical officer of Nant Health. And we've invited Bobby to come today to, to give some important messages to people who are living with cancer. And the question I ask him to answer for us is, what are the four or five things that you would like to tell people living with cancer about getting their clinical care in the age of COVID? Thank you, Pat, for inviting me to speak with you today about this very important topic. It's, it's a very challenging time right now in oncology as we try to adjust to the pandemic. I think the most important thing, first of all, that we would want patients to understand is that uh, it's safe uh, to, to be treated for cancer, to be evaluated, to be um, screened, to receive surgeries, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, um, all of the things that we would normally do in the process of evaluating and treating these patients, uh, we should continue to do. Um, it's not a situation where we can delay unnecessarily uh, things that need to happen. So people need to feel comfortable and safe with that. I think number two, we want people to understand that there are um, strategies that are in place to help mitigate their risk of developing the disease, C COVID, not, not necessarily cancer, but COVID, um, where, with uh, wearing of masks, with the use of social distancing within uh, the hospital system and the clinic system where we are spacing out patient visits, we're physically distancing them uh, so that it's, again, safe for them to be treated. And then I think we want patients to understand that uh, if you have cancer and you're being treated for cancer, getting the coronavirus is a very bad thing, certainly. It's bad for everyone. And patients with cancer have significantly higher risks of mortality from coronavirus. Uh, but their risk actually of mortality uh, from coronavirus is, is actually not any higher than say patients who have other significant comorbid illness. So for example, people who have severe um, cardiac disease, um, hypertension, uh, those patients actually have very similar risk. Um, so in that sense, you know, if you're uh, an otherwise healthy patient with, with a cancer, uh, your, your risk is yes greater, than the average person, but it's not significantly worse. And so I don't want my cancer patients, I tell my cancer patients this, you don't need to, to, to sort of you know, panic and, and be afraid. You, you need to be smart and avoid risky situations, of course, um, but you can continue to function and, and have a semi, hopefully normal life as, as other patients with cancer have. And particularly our patients who are receiving adjuvant therapy, these are people who we're treating for cure. And we want to try to cure them of their cancer. And we don't want something like the risk of coronavirus to, to stand in the way of that narrow opportunity to cure them. Because unfortunately in my business, we end up seeing them later if they relapse. And anything I can do today to prevent that relapse, I want to try to do. So I think those are, those are the most important high level things. And I guess the, the last thing I would say is that patients with, um, with cancer today need to be aware that uh, there are certain things that we're doing a little bit differently in terms of their treatments uh, that uh, should help prevent problems. So for example, we've relaxed the rules on giving growth factors. So the uh, American Society of Clinical Oncology has relaxed some of the rules and uh, many private payers, for example, have relaxed the pre-authorization requirements. And so we're able to support the immune system a little bit better. We're able to give uh, red blood cell growth factors so we can avoid transfusions. Um, we're able to change the schedule of certain types of drugs. So for example, one of the most commonly used immunotherapy drugs, Keytruda, um, was normally given on an every three week schedule. Many places are doing it on a Q six week schedule. So spacing that interval out. So people can continue to receive the benefit of the treatment, but it's more convenient. Um, similarly, uh, certain types of radiation schedules have been changed. And then lastly, we've changed from giving intravenous therapy to oral therapy whenever possible. So a lot of things have been done to make it safer and more convenient for patients uh, today. And then hopefully we'll continue to do that in the future once this pandemic ends. 
Perfect. That is a wonderful message. And I think I could sum it up by saying, hey, you guys, if you have cancer, if you think you have cancer, don't delay your care. It is safe to get care. Absolutely.